I want to thank you for joining me today. Uh, I'd like to present to you today uh, a new approach to watercolor painting and specifically this is going to be with the use of organic paints. And when I say organic what I mean is using uh, common everyday products like teas and coffees, uh, alcohol and spirits, and other kinds of uh, organic materials to create your watercolor design, whatever it happens to be. Uh, let me show you this one that I've already created as a finished product. This one uh, uses teas, both uh, teas from a tea bag, it was a Bigelow tea that I used in this instance, and then some loose teas. This. Uh, uh, Tiesta Tea Eternity. One of the things I really like about this tea is that it has both blueberry and wild cherry uh, loose teas in it. And as a result of that, these teas stain the paper quite beautifully and it makes it very, very nice for the finished product. So let me, uh, let me get started here and then we can come back to this particular item. In particular, all I've done is taken a, a Bigelow tea. This is a Earl Grey tea, just regular old Earl Grey tea. And uh, I've heated it up so that it's warm. And in this particular case, I've let the tea bag sit in the, in the water overnight. So um, it should be quite, uh, quite intense as far as the color is concerned. We'll see how it goes here. I can of course pour this out but I thought I could uh, just drip it onto the paper today and we'll see how this works with uh, the absorbency of the watercolor paper. Now it's going to take quite a while for this water to get fully absorbed and at the same time we want to let that happen because we want the stain of the tea to be absorbed fully by the paper. And then I'm going to take some of the uh, loose teas that uh, are not in a tea bag. I bought this just at the local grocery store and uh, it will proceed to stain the paper here. and we'll see how it turns out. As you can see from this picture that I've already done, the um, watercolor or the, the teas stain the paper just like it was a, a intense watercolor. So the uh, quality of the the dye is quite uh, intense in this case and quite lovely, I think. So we'll just let this sit here for a while and let the, the paper absorb the colors and then we'll see what we have and what it uh, inspires us to create from that point forward. Okay, I'm back. Um, I've let this paper dry quite a bit now, so let me just brush the tea. And I did sprinkle a little bit of salt on the paper also to help it uh, dry more quickly. So let me brush all this off and let's see what we have. Okay, so now I have uh, sprinkled a little salt on the paper as well and in this case I have uh, wiped off most of the particulate matter from the tea but I haven't wiped it all off I don't want to smear it too much so I'll just let the rest of this dry I thought this would be a perfect choice to do something kind of uh, uh, unusual perhaps a uh, um, dragonfly or something to decorate the right side of the page over here. So I've specifically uh, 
selected some paints. In this case, I'm going to use the PH Martins uh, paint. This is the uh, Quinacridone Magenta. And we'll see if I uh, want to use another shade as well. I might use this um, Thalo Green as well, but I'm going to see. I may use the uh, Daniel Smith uh, Cabo Blue, which has a very radiant quality to it that I like very much. So let's, uh, let's get the paper wet here and I'm going to uh, I'm going to do it with a spray atomizer to uh, let the paint maybe blend a little bit. So I'll start with uh, with these shades up here, and it's going to I'm going to go outside the lines here. I I, I kind of find that uh, loose quality to it very refreshing. Maybe not too much here. We'll pull it back a little bit. Okay, and now let's let's try this Daniel Smith turquoise. It's actually a Cabo Blue is the name they use for it. And we'll dip a little little lavender in here as well to give the the wings a bit of an iridescent quality. I like the edges being soft and not too, too rigid here. Now for the body, I think we'll go with this blue shade. I'll list all of these uh, supplies and colors in the bottom supply list on the page so they will all appear for you there. A little bit uh, darker shade as well the body here. I bet the um, 
interference shades would be beautiful here too. They have such a pearlized quality to them. Let me see if I can find one that's going to work for us here. Let's try the uh, duochrome tropical sunrise and maybe a little tropical topaz here in the Daniel Smith palette. We'll see what happens with this addition. just experimenting here because I'm not really sure what the best approach is, but we're, we're just having fun, so we'll experiment and see how it turns out. Actually, I like this tropical sunrise, or tropical topaz, I should say. Okay, let's let it dry again for a few minutes and then we'll uh, brush off the rest of this tea and we'll see what we what our final product is. Okay, so I'm back again. This is our finished image. I finished uh, brushing as much of the uh, tea leaves off of the paper as I can. There are a few spots that still uh, are not completely dry and the dragonfly uh, has been completed. The background image here, the, the topaz that I used was uh, Daniel Smith's iridescent topaz. Uh, I think I, I misspoke about what it was. The dragonfly is a traditional image of uh, change and, and transformation and uh, uh, realization, coming into a realization of your own, so I think it's a perfect choice for uh, what we've been doing here today. At any rate, um, I think this is pretty much done. I'll, I'll also uh, share the uh, hummingbird motif with you so you can have both of the uh, images to uh, uh, explore. I really like the modeled quality of this particular background with the tea leaves. This one turned out to be quite red, but that's fine. It's uh, just a different style of how the tea uh, comes into its own. So please, uh, if you enjoyed this uh, uh, description and demo today, please uh, press the subscription button and I hope you'll be able to join me again sometime. Please give me any comments that you uh, are interested in sharing as well. I'd be glad to hear from you.